Good morning, everybody. Good okay, that's kind of better. Today is the first Sunday of the Great Holy Land, which is eight weeks long. And it is as follows, and let us recite them together. We keep remembering them every year. So today is the preparation, then Temptation Sunday, then Prodigal Son, Samaritan Woman, Paralyzed Man, Blind Man, Palm Sunday, then the Feast of Resurrection. So do you recall them? Let's say them all together just once more. I'm sure, I'm pretty sure that your Sunday school servants will remind you with all this, but I would like you to keep this by heart. So today is uh, the preparation Sunday, right? Yeah. Then after preparation we have temptation. Then prodigal son. Then Samaritan woman. Then paralyzed man. Then blind man. Then Palm Sunday, and finally, the Feast of Resurrection, exactly. <coughs> but today is also called uh, uh, the Treasure Sunday, because uh, as we just heard and read, yes, the liturgy gospel from Matthew chapter 6, verses 19 to 33, begins with, uh, Do not lay up treasures, lay up for yourselves treasures on earth, but lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven. Right? This is the first reading, the first verse, Matthew 6, 19. Why? Because uh, treasures on earth can be easily destroyed by moth or rust uh, and can easily stolen, be stolen by thieves. Right? Correct. Uh, if you may recall that last Sunday, we spoke about what? Does anyone remember what we spoke about last Sunday? We spoke about the fundamental, the three fundamental pillars of Christian worship. These were charity, <laughs> prayers, and fasting. Right? Explaining how they all come from a heart full, filled with the love of God and the love of others while struggling to reach our heavenly destination. Do you recall any of that? Okay, you don't remember. That's fine. As a matter of fact, the one who lays up treasures for himself on earth is actually possessed by the love of money. The love of money can easily destroy your relationship with God and others, just like mother rust, <coughs> besides stealing your uh, eternal uh, target or your eternal heritage just like thieves. Well, how could this be? As a matter of fact, St. Paul, in his first epistle to Timothy, chapter 6, verse 10, 1 Timothy 6, 10, he warns again as the love of money, saying, for the love of money is the root of all kinds of evil. The love of money is the root of all kinds of evil. Such as what? I will give you three examples how the love of money can destroy our eternal heritage. Number one, when the heart is filled with the love of money, there is no room to love God, right? And when there is no room to love God, I will be looking and trying hard and hard to get more and more and more money. And in the meantime, the commandment will be very hard to fulfill. It's going to be heavy. And that's why we heard in today's Gospel, again, verse 24, you cannot serve God and mammon. By mammon, the Lord meant money. You cannot serve God and mammon. In the book of Joshua, we learn about how God overthrew the city of Jericho before the face of the children of Israel, despite its great walls and powerful army. Yet, he commanded them not to take anything for themselves from the spoils, lest they be cursed. That was God's commandment, and they all knew about it. Joshua told every single person, do not take anything out of the spoils from that city, lest you will be cursed. But someone from the tribe of Judah, whose name was Achan, the son of Carmi, his heart was filled with the love of money. He was possessed by that. So he did not heed to the Lord's ordinances, and he stole for himself 
some fine garments with gold and silver, and he went into his tent and hid them secretly there. So God became wrathful against his own people, and he defeated them before a small army from a village called Ai. Certainly all the people were extremely disturbed by this. Well, we defeated a great city like Jericho, and now we are defeated before a small army like the village of Ai. How are we going to manage? And all the other nations that we are traveling through, they are going to defeat us, and we are going to be erased from the surface of earth. So, what is it that Joshua did? He cast a lot. According to the order of God, he cast a lot to identify the one who brought this curse. And the Lot eventually identified that it was Achan, the son of Carmi, who did it. So when he was chosen by the Lot, he had no other choice but to confess his transgression. He did not confess out of uh, remorse or out of uh, repentance, but he confessed because, well, he was identified, everything is now revealed, he had no other options, so he co uh, confessed his transgression. But unfortunately, it was too late for him to be forgiven, and the verdict was that he to be stoned until death, and everything he had was to be burned with fire. So, this is number one. His relationship with God was destroyed, and everything he had went away. Let me search my heart thoroughly. And let me ask myself where I can find my joy. Is it actually in giving or rather in gaining? Laying up treasures here on earth or laying up treasures up there in heaven? So this is the first thing. And when the love of God is extinguished in my heart, I no longer love God. The love of God is extinguished in my heart. I will have no regard for those whom he calls my brethren, like the poor and the needy. You know, remember the, uh, the, uh, the Lazarus in the parable the Lord mentioned? This man, his body was covered with sores, and he was laid at the gate of the house of a rich man, but he had nothing to eat and even nothing to wear. So, when the love of God is extinguished in my heart, I will have no regard to those people. And even more, my ears will be shut to the teachings of God's holy men and his servants. These teachings can show me the way to the right and to the wrong. And let us see an example to this. This is in the second book of Kings, chapter 5. I think we all recall that story when the commander, the Syrian commander, whose name was Naaman the Syrian, was healed from his leprosy when he uh, washed in the Jordan River by the, through the prayers of whom Elisha the prophet. So Naaman was, was healed, and after that he went back to uh, Elisha and begged him and urged him to accept some of the precious gifts that he brought in return for this great miracle. But Elisha refused, and he insisted not to take anything and send them in peace. Elisha had a disciple whose name was Jehazi, and this guy, he was a good guy, but unfortunately his heart was filled with the love of money. So he knew that his master refused to take anything, but he ridiculed and disregarded his master's decision and wish. So he ran after the Syrian men and pretended to be sent by his uh, teacher and said to them, well, please give me some fine garments, some precious garments and some silver. And he didn't say that he's going to take them for himself. He went back and again he hid them. But Elisha knew by the, pro by the spirit what his disciple did. And when he asked them, this time Jehazi denied he didn't say anything. And though he denied, yet he was cursed. He himself became a leper, and he became a leper for the rest of his life. So, let me ask you, how do you think, how do you regard God's holy men? How do you think of them? Do you honor them? Do you listen to their teachings? Or rather, ridicule them and just disregard what they say, doing whatever you wish. 
because if you do not consider the teachings of God's servants, then you will be losing a great deal of blessings. Now, I no longer love God. I no longer love his children. I have no regard for them. Then, the greatest commandment. What is the greatest commandment in the whole Bible? Do you know this? The greatest commandment. Y yes, huh? George. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and mind, with all your soul and strength. This is the greatest of all commandments. And the second greatest is, uh, huh? you shall love your neighbor as yourself. So these are the greatest two commandments of the whole Bible. And that's the purpose of God from all the commandments. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and mind, with all your soul and strength, and your neighbor as yourself. So when I do not love God because of the love of money, when I do not love his children or regard them, again because of the love of money, what would become of me? <coughs> My ultimate goal in going to heaven has been stolen. And now let us remember what happened. Let us recall what became of the rich man in that parable. This rich man, while living, he was clothed in purple and fine linen. He lived a luxurious life and he ate all kinds of delicious foods. But when he died, he was buried. And what happened when he was buried? He lifted up his eyes from Hades and cried with a loud voice, My father Abraham, please have mercy upon me and send Lazarus that he may dip the tip of his fingers in water and cool my tongue because I am tormented in that flame. But Abraham answered, Son, remember that in your lifetime you received your good things and likewise Lazarus evil things. Now he is comforted and you are tormented. Would anyone love to have something like this, would uh, like to end up in this position? As a matter of fact, no. But there was no way for this rich man to revert the situation. Well, he lived a life and he was given so many chances, uh, but he rejected them all. And at the end, he went to Hades and he was tormented there. Let us remember, let us uh, reject the love of money. Let us not lay up treasures for ourselves here on earth, but rather up there in heaven. How? By investing. Investing our time, investing our money, our efforts in order to serve God, to take care of his children and to serve his house, to glorify his holy name, to whom is glory forever and ever. Amen. Cheer in your death.